Everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hike the Eagle Creek Trail here in the Columbia River Gorge, about an hour east of Portland, Oregon. Now, the Eagle Creek Trail here is, uh, you probably could call this the signature trail of the Columbia River Gorge. It's beautiful, there's a ton of waterfalls. I really can't describe how beautiful it is, so just watch the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a lot of different options. You can go to Punchbowl Falls, which is only a few miles round trip. You can go to Tunnel Falls, a little bit longer, or you can take the trail all the way up to Wadham Lake, a beautiful lake up in the mountains. And in this video, I'll show you how to do it all. I'll take you on the trail all the way up there, so no matter where you're going, you'll feel confident by watching this video. And if you are gonna do it, I have a full guide on hikingguide.com where I'll talk about the distances to each landmark, how long they all take, what you need to do to parking. All the boring stuff will be in the guide. Link to that right under the video on YouTube or just do a search for Hiking Guy Eagle Creek Trail and you will find it. Now, as you're watching the video, if you like it, if you find the guide helpful, if you could do me a favor and just click the little thumbs up, it's an easy way to say thank you. So thank you for doing that. And without further ado, let me show you this beautiful, beautiful trail. One of my favorites of all time. It actually was closed because of a big fire here. It recently opened. So uh, this is my first time back on the trail since then. Anyway, guys, let's hit the trail and I, uh, I'll show you what it's all about. All right. So before you even start the hike, I'd encourage you to go down to the creek if it's the fall and take a look, see if you can see any salmon that are spawning. They do spawn up the Eagle Creek here and it is pretty cool to see the salmon. Otherwise, from the parking lot, and there are three parking areas, I'll talk about that in the guide again. Parking can be tricky here, but there's a trail board, and then right past the trail board is the actual trail. And we're going to start from here and start hiking up along the banks of Eagle Creek. There's a sign in the beginning telling the distances to the popular destinations. Those are one-way distances. But right from the gun, it's very scenic. You can see we're right by the shores of Eagle Creek and um, you know it's just breathtaking from the get-go and if it's been raining you're gonna see all kinds of little waterfalls coming into Eagle Creek these aren't named falls this is just water that's flowing down off of the basalt cliffs just like this there might be some that actually flow into the uh, trail I always bring like a rain shell with me even if it's not raining at the time, if there's been rain, it'll be pretty wet and muddy. Um, you know, so just expect to get wet on this is probably a safe bet. Now, there's some sections called the cables uh, where it's essentially a trail blasted into the side of the basalt cliff like you see here. And here you can see the start of the cable over on your left hand side. And it's, you know, probably about four feet wide. It's not too crazy. The drop is far. You can see there's tops of the trees on the right. But as long as you hold on to the cable, go slow, watch your footing, you should be fine. Passing can be tricky, but just try to stay uh, close and stay on the cable and it should all work out for you as we go up. Now that was the first section of cables. Here's the second section of cables. And uh, this is a little bit wider here, but you can see really, really beautiful on these moss covered basalt cliffs. All this basalt is actually about 20 million years old, volcanic basalt. Now, if we look down there, that's Metlaco Falls. That's the kind of first big falls on the hike, and it's uh, the end of where the salmon can spawn to. They can't make it up those falls, so they will spawn up to that point. And after you see Metlaco Falls, we're going to cross over Sorensen Creek. And there's a ton of these little creek crossings as you go up. And again, be prepared to get wet. Sometimes there's trees blown down like there are here. But in general, it's pretty easy um, to navigate and follow, especially on these lower parts. Now, this junction is important. If we go down to the right, it'll be uh, down to Lower Punchbowl Falls, a little viewpoint down there. Now, before, uh, a few years ago, it was much easier to see the Lower Falls. There's been a rock slide, and you can see it up ahead there, those big boulders. If you want to see the falls, you're going to have to go across the creek and climb over those boulders. On a day like this, there was too much water in the creek to climb over it, um, so don't do it if it's raging like this. But otherwise, you have to do a little scrambling to see the lower falls. But if you want to see the actual punch bowl falls, you just continue a little bit farther past that junction that we were at before. And there's this fence, and if you look down, you'll see punch bowl falls right down there. 
And this is iconic. It's like Mount Hood or something. You'll see this on travel posters, Punchbowl Falls. Really beautiful uh, waterfall. If you want to continue going, which I definitely recommend doing, uh, the trail continues. This is Tish Creek and the Tish Creek Bridge, which was actually helicoptered in here and dropped as we go up here. And again, here's some uh, more drop uh, blowdowns from trees. Up ahead, you can see the uh, Fern Creek Bridge as we approach it over there. And these bridges are, are nice. You can look down and see the raging streams flowing in here. And in the summertime, if it's been dry, these can be dry too. Uh, some of them are perennial and some of them are not, but uh, you know, it's best done, I think, for me when it's raining out or when it's been wet. It's really gorgeous and there's water everywhere, which some people have a problem with, not me. But anyway, let's continue going past Fern Creek here. And here we're going through a, um, a, a scree field, talus. These are rocks uh, from the basalt that have tumbled down the cliff below us over there. Some huge boulders that have rolled down into Eagle Creek and have become covered in moss, but really, really beautiful the whole way as we continue. And then once we pass these boulders, you're gonna see uh, Lewitt Falls over to the right, another great waterfall here. Beautiful, beautiful, especially at a time again like this when the rain's been doing its thing and the water is flowing. Now we're gonna continue up a little more and we're gonna have another cable section you can see right here, wet as the water sort of pours down off the basalt cliffs. And then at 3.3 miles, we're going to reach High Bridge. And this is also spectacular. Everything is spectacular on this trail. But if you look down, you're going to go, uh, you're going to be about 120 feet above a gorge, which is also the um, fastest and deepest gorge uh, here on Eagle Creek. Some of the Forest Service literature says 150 feet, but uh, 120, I've heard, and seems a little bit more accurate, but it's still spectacular. You can see there's the gorge down there. Really, really beautiful. Now, at this point, we're crossed over to the right side of Eagle Creek and um, another, another falls as we come up here. And there's also a campground over here, which is not quite what it used to be before the fire. And I'll talk about camping if you want to make a camping trip out of this on the guide on hiking guy but here we are at four and a half mile bridge one thing to note the original uh, trailhead was where the interstate is now where the hatchery is so everything is based on that so this is more like four miles in reality and you can see the water is really beautiful you can see the trail blasted out of the cliff on the left there and then up ahead is tennis falls up ahead upstream there now from here we're going through some of the burn area. You can see some of these trees have been burned and some of them haven't been burned. It's, uh, you know, kind of a mixed bag. I thought this area would be much more devastated than it was. You can definitely see it, but uh, a lot of the beauty is still intact. Here we are in the Mark Hatfield Wilderness Area. He was, I think, the governor of Oregon. He was also a U.S. state senator. You can <laughs> see the burn damage as we go through here. Now, when you come around uh, across one of these creeks, there's a very spectacular, I think it's about 150 feet, uh, Y East Falls. Y East is the native word for Mount Hood. Really, really beautiful uh, waterfall as you come around. And likewise, the trail is just spectacular. These moss covered cliffs uh, with the trail blasted out of it, it just doesn't get old as you go up here. Really, really beautiful. Now, when you come around this cliff, you're going to get a view of Grand Union Falls. This has nothing to do with the Civil War. It's uh, the union of the East and West Fork of Eagle Creek, which happens a little upstream from here. Now, once you pass Grand Union Falls, you're going to come around the bend and you will see Tunnel Falls right up there. And it's big, again, about 150 feet. And as you get closer, you look down, it goes into this shallow pool really spectacular the, the power of the water when it's really flowing will take your breath away but the main attraction of course is the tunnel that was blasted in through the back here in 19 i think 17 they did the, the blasting here you can go here i'm holding the camera over the edge i would say don't go near the edge here but you can see the falls spectacular and then you walk behind the falls now this is a uh, tunnel through the rock you're not exposed to the water 
but when you come through on the other side the water is right next to you as you go along here and again this is a cable section the drop is steep so you're going to want to hold on to the cables go slow and watch your footing and we come around here it's always nice to look back at the falls which are spectacular now for a lot of people this will be the end of their hike if you are going to come to tunnel falls all the way here i would recommend just going another I don't even, not even a quarter mile or so, and going to Twister Falls, which is right up ahead. I love Twister Falls because you can hike right up next to the falls and you really get a sense of the power of the water that's rushing through here. And there's also this section, which is one of my favorite um, cable sections along the cliff here. This looks like something that could be out of a postcard. It probably has been, but once we go around this cable section, um, we're gonna see the uh, Twister Falls and I'm gonna hold the camera over the side so you can take a look down here. Really, really spectacular. Obviously, you're not gonna to wanna to go close to the side there. That's me holding a camera. But once we come up around the bend, you're gonna be basically right at the mouth of Twister Falls here. And I've heard this called Bowtie Falls and Crossover Falls. It's got two kind of branches that come around a big boulder in the middle and then twist together. And you can see it here in the sun glare a little bit but really, really beautiful. So if you've come up just to see waterfalls in this hike, I'd say come to this point, and then from here you can uh, turn around and go back down, but there you can see the crossover, the bow tie, or the twist of the water rushing down. But if you're gonna go up to Wadham Lake, or maybe uh, you're gonna be camping, we're gonna continue up a little bit. These are Seven Mile Falls here, and then right past uh, Seven Mile Falls is what I'd say is probably the most popular campground on the, the trail, which is the seven and a half mile camp. And it's easy to miss. Uh, the way to do it is once you pass Seven Mile Falls, look down to the right there, you can see some tent sites. This is a really nice spot because you have easy access to water in Eagle Creek. There are some spots uh, farther up scattered around, but this is a really good campsite. First come, first serve, and uh, it does get crowded so just plan accordingly now from here we're going to head up to Wadham lake and this is sort of the bulk of the climbing there's about 2300 feet of climbing from seven and a half mile camp up here and you can see not a lot of folks come up here there's a lot more down trees there's also a lot more fire damage um, probably for the next two miles or so you can see all of these trees now don't miss this uh, point where the trail cuts back to the left. If you go straight, you're gonna be on the Eagle Tanner Trail, which is a different trail. The Eagle Creek Trail will cut back up shortly after seven and a half mile camp. And then you're gonna have a nice long climb. Um, in general, the, the gradients on this, I think are around 5% average ballpark around there. So it's never too crazy climbing up, but a couple more stream crossings as we go up here. This is the section where we're basically climbing up the side of the canyon that we came up. We're doubling back, and I'll show you what this looks like on a 3D map at the end. And as you get up, you're gonna see some of the higher peaks surrounding us. Now, I shot this video in November, and there was already snow up on the higher peaks. In a mile or two, you're gonna see a bunch of snow. And as we come around the corner here, you can see the uh, high peaks around uh, Wadham Lake. You can see how steep the drop is into the canyon. And you can also see there's still a bunch of dead trees here. There's a lot of downed trees, a lot of blowdowns in this area. Here's the junction for Indian Springs, which is up to the right. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna stay straight on Eagle Creek, clear the blowdowns, and eventually we're gonna clear the burn area and come into all of these um, firs here. This is basically what the burn area looked like before it was burned. Um, really lush and beautiful forest here as we continue uphill. There's a few uh, sections of, of talus across here, scree. We go across here and you can see the snow is starting here. We're probably about a mile and a half, two miles from the end at this point. This is early November and here the snow is increasing. Uh, we kept going. Our plan was to camp at Wadham Lake. We ended up not doing that because there was a little too much snow for the gear that we had. And you can see all of a sudden, within like a half a mile, the snow is dramatically increased. And then all of a sudden, I'm in Santa's village. It's really snowy. And in the winter, this is not passable, generally. 
but eventually you're going to come up 13.3 miles to Wadham Lake. There's some tent sites all around the lake here. There's some other trails. You can come and do a loop, but to see the lake, we're just going to make that quick left here, go down and head over uh, to this little viewpoint where you could see the lake and there's a lot to explore here. It's a great place to camp and there are some alternative routes if you want to hike back down a different way, but otherwise you can just hike back down uh, the way we came up. All right, so let me just walk you through the map to give you a lay of the land. This is the general idea. We're going to start down here and we're going to hike up along Eagle Creek until we get to that Eagle Tanner Trail and then we're going to double back start climbing up the slopes until we get to Wadham Lake up here. Now I mentioned earlier that the original start of the trail was at uh, the area where the interstate is now, where the Eagle Creek campground is. I'll talk about parking, but this is the best parking, which is at the, um, at the trailhead. There's another couple spots in here, and there's a much bigger lot down here at the Eagle Creek day use area. But anyway, here we go. Let's start on the hike. We're going to go up along the creek here. Here you can see there's the falls. And if I swing this around, let's see if we can get a look at the cables. Not really. This is in the summer when it's been drier. I'm guessing the photographs are after the fire because it's, uh, it's a little bit bare here. But here are the falls. You get the viewpoint over there. There used to be an overlook area, which is not there anymore. And then here is that area where I told you you can go down to the lower punch bowl falls, which is right over here, or you can come back up and continue over to the viewpoint, which is right there. The lower falls are down there and you have to do some scrambling. Here's the um, regular punch bowl falls that you get to see down from the viewpoint. Once we cross there, this is where that Tish bridge was. And then we continue on. Um, all the way up here, this was uh, Fern Creek. Let me angle this up a little bit so you can kind of get an idea. And you can see from this, this view here how it hugs the side of the cliff above Eagle Creek as we go up. Here's High Bridge over the gorge. And obviously these lines aren't mapping onto the trail because it's a satellite photo, but there you can really see the gorge and how dramatic it is as it pours through. Here we're crossing over to the right side. We're heading up to four and a half mile bridge where we're gonna cross back over right here. And then we're gonna continue up along the creek. And let me show you where we get to Then we're going to continue up along the creek and you can see the canyon is getting narrower as we go up which means it's a little more dramatic as we follow this up right through the twists and turns past all the falls and our next destination will be tunnel falls And from the bridge, we're going to follow the creek up. You can see the canyons getting more narrow as we head up here. And then this was that bend where we came around and we saw Tunnel Falls right here. Came around the bend, we go behind Tunnel Falls, and then there's that short extra distance up to Twister Falls right here. Keep going up Seven Mile Falls, which I showed you, and then past that is the Seven and a Half Mile Camp which is down a little bit in between the um, trail over here and the creek right down there. Now from 7.5 Mile Camp, I mentioned we're going to start climbing. We have about 2,300 feet of climbing. You can see the trail doubles back over here. This is that turn I, I told you about. It's easy to uh, just go straight if you're not paying attention, but the Eagle Tanner Trail is, is much smaller than the Eagle Creek Trail. It's not as maintained as well, but 
don't miss this climb to go back uphill here. And from there, you can see we start climbing up gradually up along the canyon. We do a couple of turns here. And then this was the turn where we came around and we saw the high mountains. And if I angle this up a little bit, you can see this is the peak we saw. We came up to the Indian Springs Trail here. This is where that trail branches off. And you can actually see it on the satellite photo up there. But we're going to keep going up along the canyon. Here we're back into the forest. We do a turn. There's some campsites down here that I marked in the um, in the file. If you uh, want to camp up here, it's another option that you have. But otherwise, we're going to keep climbing up until we get to the edge right here where we are at Wadham Lake. And this is the lake. This is the end of the trail. And from here, you can come back the way you came, like I mentioned, or you can take some other options back down, uh, including the PCT back down to the start. So that's the hike. If you have any questions, leave me a uh, comment on the YouTube video. And if you have not done this already, please put it on your bucket list. It is uh, worth every second that you will spend there. It's a really, really cool hike. All right, guys, I'll, uh, I'll see you out there. Bye. Mm -hmm.